What's up, creator? This video will be a fun and comprehensive tutorial on how to use IV Cam on OBS. We will review the installation process and then set up the new camera in OBS Studio so that you can leverage the high end camera for your live streams. What we'll do first is install the IV Cam on your PC and then we'll install the IV Cam application on your Android or iPhone. We will then establish a connection between the two pieces of hardware. After making that connection, we will explore some of the exciting settings that IVCam has to offer and we'll bring in the new camera source into OBS Studio. And if you stay to the end of the video, I'll explain how to mitigate that damn irritating latency problem that rears its ugly head with these type of programs. Damn, Janet's pissed. <laughs> Let's go. All right, let's download the IV Cam software for the PC. We are at e2esoft.com forward slash IV Cam. And let's go and click the download for Windows button. And it will download the software. I'm going to put it into my downloads folder. It's only 17 megabytes in size. All right, it is downloaded. Let's go to the folder and take a look here. There it is, IV Cam. 5.3.5, hit yes, select English if you're from the United States, going to put it in the default folder that it says here, which is going to be program files, and then it'll put it in a folder that I'm going to let that go. That's always pretty much trouble free. Setup will, cre will create the program shortcut to the following start menu. Okay, we'll let it create a shortcut. That's good. And run it startup. Sounds good. Hit install. Okay, it's complete. I'm gonna hit finish. And it wants to ask me, Windows Defender Firewall has blocked some of the features. I'm gonna allow access. Okay, so here's the window. It's saying not connected and it's probably because we have not connected our phone. So let's get the app installed on our phone right away. Okay, here's the IV Cam webcam application on the iPhone. It looks exactly like this on the Android Google Play store as well. So as long as you see this blue icon with the, the camera kind of looking icon in the middle of that, there's some kids on a beach below it. If you're there, download it to your phone. I'm going to download it to my iPhone right now. Here we go. Now upon installing this, it's going to want to prompt you to send notification of course you want to hit allow for that at this point one of two things will happen either you will connect wirelessly or you will not i could not i tried troubleshooting the issue for about an hour and then i basically just said to myself well i'll just try connecting with the usb wire and the connection worked out just fine i'm using it as a desktop webcam camera and i would prefer to have less latency and i'm plenty happy using the usb cable because latency is mitigated with a wire versus the NDI Wi-Fi technology. So that's why I didn't continue troubleshooting it because I would prefer to have the USB cable. If you're using it like I am, I would recommend the USB cable. So let's take a look at the settings and their effect on the camera's performance when you make the changes on, on settings. Here we go. Okay, here we are in IV Cam successfully working with the USB cord. And if we click the lower right hand corner hamburger, it opens up, click settings, and this is the available settings for the program that will control your phone. So for example, here we've got video orientation, we can do landscape or portrait. Video size, currently we're at 640 by 360, we're at uh, 60 frames per second with a video quality of low, and we're using a video format of RGB 24 plus YUI 2. The thing that sticks out on this setting is that it really feels like 60 frames per second, and there is absolutely no lag, which is really great. And so, I don't know, that's pretty cool. I don't know that I would want to go with a smaller size. I have learned that the sweet spot for my computer, and it's going to be different for your computer because you have a different CPU and a connection speed and all that stuff. It'll be different for you, so it will take some experimentation. For me, on this iPhone on my new computer, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second with a video quality of high, if I hit OK to that, it seems to still work fairly well. No lag, which is incredible at 60 frames a second. I don't know that we're actually getting 60 frames, but there's no lag there's no lag at this resolution if i go back into settings here 
and I turn it all the way up, full bore, which is 4K, 60 frames a second, quality high. I hit OK to that. At this point, I start seeing lag, about a half second, enough to be really irritating. So I don't know that you would want to be at 4K on a webcam, but it's not totally necessary, especially with OBS. Again, my sweet spot is one size lower, which would be 1920 by 1080. And that works just beautifully. So there's more settings, actually. If you go and click the gear, you get camera settings. You can uncheck the auto exposure here and the auto white balance. And then you can make these sliders move to whatever you want. You can experiment with the brightness and the exposure, which is really great. It also comes with, if you click this little lightning bolt down by the controls, I'll turn, hold it up here to so the other camera so you can see it. You can click and toggle the various brightnesses of your flashlight on your phone if you reverse the camera, if you decide to do that. So one click goes one brightness, another click goes to another, and then finally, uh, I think it's like the third click, the light will turn off. If you click the wand, it does a color enhancement. I don't know that you would want to experiment with it. It just makes the colors a little bit more vibrant. It looks it makes your skin look a little bit better. I'll turn it off and turn it on. I don't know. It kind of looks nice. I think maybe I would do it. This will flip you upside down and this one will flip you left to right which is really great and then of course if you hit the camera button here it will flip you to the other camera so that when you hit the uh, lightning bolt here to turn the light on you get the different no it's not turning on that's interesting so I flip the camera and I tried to turn the flashlight on and it won't work go figure I don't know so those are the settings it's fairly cut and dry it's not rocket science it's just going to take some experimentation to figure out what will work for your computer okay here we are in obs we have a blank scene that i created called phone webcam and i will hit the plus sign in the lower left hand corner for the sources box and i will select video capture device i will name this scott's desk cam and i will hit ok and it will prompt me with a window asking me what camera to select if i go to the device pull down here I'll select E2E Soft IV Cam, hit OK, and there's the window. We are currently at, if I click the IV Cam window and click the hamburger, I will tell you the settings I'm at, which is 30 frames a second, 960 by 540 with a video quality of medium. Uh, it seems to be pretty good. I'm happy with that setting. Uh, if you are using the trial version and you do see a logo, you can get that to go away. All you have to do is adjust the frame by hitting your Alt key and clicking the handle on the left and just dragging it to the right. After a couple days, you will get prompted by the software to purchase the full version. It's only nine bucks. It's worth it, I think. The software is pretty slick. I think it's a win. I do have some occurrences of uh, metering. It starts to flicker a little bit. And every once in a while, it will freeze. And that's sort of problematic, but I don't seem to have those issues with lower resolutions. Anything at the 4K, you'll start getting the, the weird stuff to happen. It just can't handle the bandwidth. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's not too bad. Here you can see, you can start to see the flickering going on here. There, can you see it? There's that metering flickery thing going on. It's kind of funky, I don't know. Anyway, regardless of all the quirks, I still think it's worth the nine bucks. Let's go in and try to mitigate the latency now. So when I add a microphone, a USB mic, I'll click the plus sign and select the audio input capture. And I will name it Mikey. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. And hit OK. And I will select my device, which is the uh, ATR USB microphone. Hit OK. That microphone, which is right here. Uh, is shows up in the audio mixer. So if I hit the gear and click advanced audio properties, this window appears and there is something called sync offset. Sync offset. So here's my mic called Mikey. And this little arrow will increase or decrease that sync offset, which will help you mitigate the latency because OBS Studio is adjusting the speed by which your mic comes through the system. So this is where you can experiment and try to mitigate the issue by speeding it up or slowing down the milliseconds for the offset. It's going to take a little bit of experimentation on your end, but at least you know that option is there in OBS Studio. 
Now in this video, what we're going to do is set up a second phone as a camera and switch back and forth from one camera to the next in OBS via hotkeys. I'm going to explain how to do it. Yes. yes. 